Hello everyone. My name is Alyssa and on behalf of Staples, thank you for joining us today. I think we can all agree that online video has been the breakout trend in marketing for the past decade. And the pandemic has only accelerated video marketing as the go-to way to build your brand and boost your business. Our guest today is an expert in this field. Lou Bortone has been a pioneer and thought leader in the video space since YouTube launched all the way back in 2005. He's helped thousands of entrepreneurs and companies create and leverage online video to build their brands and dramatically grow revenues. And prior to his industry leading work in online video marketing, Lou spent over 20 years as a marketing executive in the television and entertainment industries. So I know we're going to in for some great information from Lou today, and we will have time for questions at the end. So you can just scan the QR code here on the screen and submit your questions at any point during the session. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Lou Bortone. Lou, thanks for being here. Take it away. Thanks, Alyssa. I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for taking time out of your day to join us for Lights, Camera, Awesome. How to use video to quickly grow and scale your business. So we can go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, as Alyssa mentioned, I'm Lou Bortone. I've been doing this for a very long time, and I'm excited to share with you how to use video to quickly grow and scale your business. So I want to share with you seven techniques or seven keys for doing better video and for using video to grow your business. And we'll go through each of these. The first one is adopting a video first philosophy. The next one is picking your platforms. We're going to talk about what I call the Seinfeld system for video. We're going to look at a few cool tools and some gear. I know there were a lot of questions ahead of time about equipment and gear, so we'll cover that. Also going to spend some time on reaching out via video, which is a very powerful way to do video. And you can't really talk about video without talking about YouTube, so we'll also talk about YouTube. And last but not least, a few ideas that you can steal or borrow from Hollywood. And if you stay till the end, there's also a quick little bonus key for you as well. So thank you for that. So the first key really is to adopt a video first attitude. And when I say that, I mean rather than thinking of video marketing as an afterthought or something that you do after your marketing plan's done, you really want to think about video first and foremost, because video is really the primary way we can connect and engage right now. That's been the case for many years, but it's only been accelerated by the pandemic. Another great thing about video is it's perfect for leveraging and repurposing. You can use the same videos in, on many platforms over and over again. It's also the single most engaging tool to really connect with your audience because video builds no like and trust faster than any other platform. And the best part of all as far as video goes is it accelerates the sales process and generates revenue for your business. So the reason I say video is must have marketing is that there are some pretty compelling statistics to back that up. In 2020, the year of the pandemic, 96% of consumers increased their online video consumption and still nine out of 10 viewers said that they wanted to see even more videos from brands and businesses. And now this year, 2021, the average person is predicted to spend 100 minutes a day, over an hour and a half a day, watching online videos. And the other great thing about video and the reason to adopt a video first mentality is that viewers retain 95% of a message when they see it in video compared to just 10% when reading it in text. In fact, YouTube saw the most significant growth of any social media app among American users during the pandemic, according to the Pew Research Center. So 81% of adults are now using YouTube. And when we talk about video first, I wanna talk about a few trends and strategies um, that uh, help you to better engage customers and clients using that video first mentality. The first is that video is getting more personal. There's a lot of personalization. We'll talk about that in a moment. The second is the rise of LinkedIn video as a real force in the industry. Um, third is that video to consumer is, is the new B2C. That should actually say B2C. 
empathy marketing has become a lot more important in the post-pandemic world. And of course, virtual everything. Last 15, 18 months, we've been forced to do virtual events and virtual networking and virtual conferences. And uh, that's probably going to continue to be the case even as we start to go back to work. And on the next slide, I'll just couple, I'll just cover a couple of these briefly. And the first is that video gets personal. And what that means is essentially what that means is that personalization in video is becoming a much bigger trend. And maybe it's not surprising since 63% of consumers are highly annoyed with generic ad blasts. And 80% say they are more likely to do business with a company if it offers a personalized experience. The more you can target and customize your messages, the more impact they will have. Another trend is the rise of LinkedIn video. LinkedIn users are actually 20% more likely to share a video post than a text post. And when both written and video content are available, 59% of senior execs prefer to watch the video. So again, LinkedIn is really kind of a sleeping giant when it comes to video marketing. They were pretty much late to the game, but they are showing up in a big way now. The other key, and next, another key is to pick your platforms. And when I say platform, I mean both the style of your video and the destination of your video. It seems like almost every day there's a new platform or a new place you're supposed to be, whether it's Clubhouse or TikTok or something else but um, I'll talk about focusing on the right platforms for you. So when I talk about video style, I mean on-camera videos versus off-camera videos or screencasts or webinars like we're doing here, live streams, animations. So there are a lot of different styles for video. And the platforms are where you actually obviously post your videos, such as YouTube and Vimeo, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and even on your own website. I talk a lot about finding your video sweet spot. And what I mean by that is that there are a lot of platforms and there are a lot of ways to approach video and you wanna find the best style for you and your audience. So what is the quickest and most effective video style for you and your audience? In other words, what is your go-to platform? Some folks prefer live video over pre-recorded video. Some people want to be on camera. Some people want to be more behind the scenes and show slides. There is no one right or wrong way to do video. You have to find the unique combination of what you enjoy doing or what's easiest and most effective for you and what your audience wants to see. And you don't necessarily have to get locked into one format. You don't always have to do Facebook Lives or always have to do pre recorded videos. You can experiment with different styles until you find that video sweet spot. There are also a ton of ways to do videos and a ton of different styles, um, such as sales videos or video tips or how-to videos that you can do on YouTube or LinkedIn. Uh, you can create educational or explainer videos, webinar videos like this one. Uh, you can do videos for your the homepage of your website, especially if you're a small business, that's really a must-have video. If you're a speaker, you can do a speaker reel. You can get customer testimonials. Uh, I'll share some software for getting customer testimonials in a bit. Uh, you can do live videos. You can go live to Facebook. You can go live to YouTube. Or you can use personalized video, such as video email. We're going to talk a lot about that in a few slides. For now, I want to make the distinction between on-camera videos and off-camera videos. Obviously, on camera videos where you're on screen, if you're doing a welcome video for your homepage, people want to see you and know that there's a person behind the company and behind the website. If you're doing a frequently asked questions series or a tip series where you want to be seen as the expert, you want to be on camera for those. If you have an about me or an about us video on your website, you want to be on camera for that one. Uh, Facebook Live and live streams are typically on camera videos, as are interviews, obviously, and testimonials. Whereas off camera videos are things like webinars and tutorial videos, animated videos, explainer videos, uh, screencasts where you're sharing your screen like you might do on Camtasia, or PowerPoint to video as well. I also like to make the distinction between 
what I call quick videos versus cheaper videos. Quick videos are videos like quick tips. Maybe you're doing a quick tip series for YouTube. Uh, testimonials tend to be quick videos. Anything that you're doing on the go at a conference, on your phone, those tend to be quick videos. Even Facebook Live and webinars can be quick videos. What I mean is those are more in the moment and on the fly. They don't necessarily need as much uh, planning or pre-production. But keeper videos, on the other hand, these are videos that are going to have some shelf life. They're going to be videos that reflect your brand. And they're going to be videos where you want to spend more time and effort, such as your homepage video, a product demo, a video that may be on a sales page or a speaker reel. Those are keeper videos. And again, those are going to require more time and effort. I'll tell you a quick story. I drink the water from a straw because I was at a live event once. I went to take a drink of a bottle of water. I spilled it on my shirt and shorted out the microphone and the audio for the entire event went out. So anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Next slide, please. So now I know better. Um, I use something called, and I have my clients use, I call it the Seinfeld system because I love the show Seinfeld, but it's basically a way to use video to be virtually everywhere and to get what I like to call the I see you everywhere effect. Now, those of us who are a little older, we know the Seinfeld has actually been off the air, the TV show, since 1998, which means they have not made a new episode in 23 years. And yet, the show is still absolutely everywhere. Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, TBS, syndication. So I like to use that sort of Seinfeld system of being everywhere and rerun my videos, assuming they're not perishable or date sensitive, you can and should repurpose your videos. Repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. And that's how you get the I see you everywhere effect, which means you can take one video, uh, think of it as the sort of hub of the wheel, and post it to Facebook or LinkedIn, assuming it's under 10 minutes. Uh, you can post the video to Twitter on your own website or blog. You can put it on YouTube or Vimeo. You can include it in an email. If it's under a minute, you can put it on Instagram. So the same video can have a lot of life on different platforms. Basically, you want to give your viewers every opportunity to find your video. Thanks. Another key to using video to grow and scale your business is to find and use the right tools. Now, a lot of folks get hung up on technology and tools. And what I really want to emphasize here is to try to keep it as simple as possible. When it comes to video and video tools, less is actually more. Because every time you add a piece of gear or a new app to your workflow, it adds a level of complexity. So try to do what is as quick and simple as possible. Stick with your reliable, go to tools and figure out what is the fastest path between you and a finished video. And in most cases, done is better than perfect. And I know people get hung up on on gear and equipment, so I want to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about the equipment that I use and recommend. Um, I'm just using a webcam that's in my uh, iMac computer, so it's embedded in the computer. But if you don't have a webcam in your computer or laptop, you can get a USB webcam. The Logitech HD Pro C920 is about 50 bucks, and you can get those at Staples as well. Very reliable, excellent webcam. Again, you can even use your smartphone. Uh, the cameras on iPhones and Android these days are outstanding. As far as audio, audio is very, very important. People will watch a video if the video quality is not great, but if the audio isn't great, they will tune out almost immediately. I use a Blue Yeti USB microphone. You can also get um, a Blue Snowball microphone, it's about the size of a softball, and both of those plug into the back of your computer with a USB port. Very simple, again, very reliable. If you are doing videos outside or somewhere where there's going to be a lot of noise, you may want to get a lavalier microphone. And the Rode Smart Lav Plus is an excellent lavalier microphone for about $100. You can connect that to your iPhone or Android. 
Uh, if you want a more low budget version of a lab microphone, the Audio Technica ATR is great, and that's only about 30 bucks online. As far as lighting, this is very important too, as well, because you want to make sure that you are adequately lit. The best thing to do is just make sure that you are lit from the front with the light coming toward you and that your um, lighting source is even adequately lit. Natural daylight is oftentimes fine. I use um, two LED lights on either side of my computer. You can find those online. And the great thing about LED lighting is you can adjust the brightness and the temperature. You can make it a little more blue, a little more yellow, a little brighter, a little less light. And finally, this isn't on the slide, but a lot of folks ask about backgrounds. You want to have a neutral and non-distracting background. And you can use a green screen that, again, it adds a level of complexity to things. You got to make sure that the green screen is really well lit. I am, believe it or not, using a $15 vinyl uh, poster, basically, tacked to the back of my wall. So very low tech, but it does the job. The main thing is that you just want to make sure that your background is not distracting and is neutral and that the focus is on you as the subject. Next slide, please. As far as apps go, again, I try to um, stick with a few tried and true apps. Um, I use Zoom quite a bit um, for just day-to-day -day video. Um, we can use Loom for video and video emails. I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that in a moment. If you are doing videos for YouTube, you want to create custom thumbnails. And I use software called Thumbnail Blaster for that that you can find online. There's another great third party app if you're doing Facebook Lives or if you're doing live streaming to Facebook uh, called StreamYard. And this is an app that simply enhances your live broadcast because it allows you to bring in other guests and show graphics and lower thirds and things like that. So you can be more like a, a professional TV show. Um, One Stream Live is another excellent tool for repurposing videos. I can take one video and send it to 10 or 15 platforms at the same exact time. So it's a great way again to repurpose your videos and get them out to as many people as possible. If you're doing off camera videos like animated videos or video montages or things like that, wave.video is one of my favorite video creation software tools. Uh, and if you want to do, uh, I'm sure you've seen these whiteboard or sketch videos, there's a, a cool inexpensive tool called doodly.com for whiteboard and sketch videos. Thanks. Another key in using video to grow and scale your business is using video for video outreach. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, the power of personal video outreach uh, or simply called video email. This is a really powerful and effective tool for uh, for any growing any business, really. I know that my video emails have a 75% open rate compared to about a 10 or 15% open rate on regular text email. Um, I've had some companies that report as much as 90% open rate for video emails. And again, video personalization is a big trend. It really pays to personalize and customize your video outreach with video email. Again, you may get 100 emails in a day, but I can almost guarantee you only getting, if at all, one or two video emails. So they have a lot of impact and they really stand out. In fact, HubSpot says that personalized videos are 35% more likely to retain viewers as compared to non-personalized videos. And there are tons of simple and affordable tools to use video email. Among them are Loom, which is a very easy and affordable software to use for sending out video messages and one-to-one -one video. Uh, Vidyard has a free and user-friendly video email tool or video outreach tool. Dub.com is another one. They're a bit more expensive because they have a few more bells and whistles. And two of my favorite tools that I use almost daily are SendSpark, which is about 12 bucks a month, or warm welcome for $8 a month. And I'll show you a couple of screenshots of each of those. Now, the cool thing about Loom at loom.com is that it's a Google Chrome extension, so it's always very handy if you're using Google Chrome. 
And you can basically go to any web page or website and call up Loom and pop onto the page there, right on the actual page. So in other words, if I'm doing, uh, if I'm sending somebody a message about my YouTube channel, I'll go to that channel and open Loom like I did here. And I'll appear in a little inset and I can record my video message directly to the person I'm sending it to. The other cool thing about Loom is if you look at the right hand side of the page here, you can see that you can add a clickable call to action. So all you have to do is say click here for more information or click here to get on my calendar and people click the link and go right from the Loom video to whatever website or call to action you want them to go to. The next tool that I like is called SendSpark. And again, with SendSpark, you can record your camera or your screen or both. So like Loom, you can be on camera recording your screen at the same time. And one of the cool things about SendSpark, if we pop to the next slide, is that again, you can have, um, you can customize it quite a bit, as you can see in this example. And uh, you can also, with SendSpark, add a clickable call to action here. So again, all folks have to do is watch the video. They don't need any special software. It just shows up in their email. And they click on the link and they go to my calendar or wherever, wherever it is I want to send them. Next slide, please. Thank you. The other cool thing about SendSpark is, and I know some folks had questions ahead of time about customer testimonials and video testimonials. With SendSpark.com, you can request customer video testimonials or client testimonials right from the app. And the viewer or the person that you're requesting the video from doesn't need to have any special software or download anything. They simply click on the link to record their testimonial. It's all within the app. There's no, you know, no hoops for them to jump through. And then on the next slide, you'll see what I get back once I request those is back in my SenseFark account, I see the video testimonials and I can decide what I want to use and I can download them from here and put them on my other website. So it's a really seamless, simple way to get customer testimonials because you're not making folks have to download anything or you're not making them have to go through a lot of technical hurdles. So I love SendSpark for that. And on the next slide, Warm Welcome is the other video email tool that I use quite a bit. And the cool thing about Warm Welcome, aside from the fact that as you can see here, I get 75% open rates, is that you can create video widgets. So you can create a video business card or what they call a video bubble, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, or a video page. So you decide what widget you want to use. And on the next slide, you'll see in this case, I'm doing a video card or video business card. So I basically record my video. My information is on the right hand side. And the best part of all, as you can see in the lower right here, when people get this video email, they can respond back via video via audio or via text. So on the next slide, you'll see how I can uh, reach out to clients and prospects and start to create engagement and start to create a conversation. So I send them a video, they send me back a video or an audio, I send them back a video, and it's a great way to engage and connect with your audience and get them really involved and immersed in the video especially good for folks like me who are introverts who would much prefer to do video email than cold calling. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, we'll see another feature of warm welcome is that you can put what they call video bubbles. If you look at the lower right hand side of this page, you'll see uh, a little bubble, a little video bubble that is embedded on top of one of my sales pages. And if you go to the next slide, when you click that bubble, you will see that I pop up in a, a video message. So again, this is on top of any page, sales page, website, blog post. You can put the bubble, people click on the bubble and they get the video message, which again uh, drives more engagement and more conversions. And once again, they can respond via text or video or audio. So it's just a great way to create a lot more engagement and really have videos at every step of the customer journey. Now you can't really talk about video without talking about uh, YouTube, which is pretty much the, the 800 pound gorilla of video. And I like to talk about taming the YouTube 
beast. If you are doing video marketing, you really have to have a presence on YouTube, and it really has become a must for businesses. The good news about YouTube, as intimidating as it can be, is that a little YouTube improvement goes a long, long way. The main thing to remember about YouTube is you want to create videos for your audience, not for algorithms. A lot of people come in and try to game the system or figure out the YouTube algorithm, but really it is much more effective to think in terms of your audience and not try to game the system and really create videos for audiences. And remember that YouTube is in fact a social network. So community counts, you want to engage, you want to answer uh, replies that people may reply on your videos. And also consistency is really important. You have to upload videos on a regular basis. Most folks suggest weekly. Um, again, as with anything, you want to start with a strategy and figure out what your goals are for YouTube and for video. Once you have your strategy, you can reverse engineer to make sure that your videos are getting you there. In other words, if you want to rank for a particular keyword, you want to make sure that um, you include that keyword in your video and talk about that keyword in your video so that there's no bait and switch. People are getting exactly what they think they're going to get when they come to your channel. The other thing to remember about YouTube is that it really is a marathon and not a sprint. I, I have been doing videos on YouTube since right after they started in 2005 and it probably took me 10 years before I had half a million views on one particular video. So it really is sort of a long game. Uh, YouTube, there are now 50 million creators making content on YouTube and 5 billion with a B YouTube videos are watched every day. The average YouTube viewing session is 40 minutes. So people are spending a lot of time on the channel. And another thing that really surprised me having come from the television business is that 60% of people now prefer video platforms over television. The other thing I have to remember about YouTube, which you'll see here, is that they have really become much like television. There's very little distinction now between uh, traditional broadcast television and YouTube. And in fact, YouTube is the streaming leader with more views than even Netflix. There are 100 million monthly viewers watching YouTube on TV. That's an 80% year over year watch time increase for YouTube on a TV screen. And if we look at the next slide, you'll see that, again, YouTube is getting 70% of the time spent streaming. There are other um, platforms that are based in China, which obviously have large percentages because of the population, but you have to go all the way down to number six before you see Netflix. So YouTube is really, really, um, dominating in streaming, even though we don't necessarily think of it as a traditional streaming outlet. The other cool thing about YouTube is that it reaches 91% of light TV viewers and 86% of cord cutters, or people who have given up television, broadcast television altogether, um, in terms of instead of doing streaming. And YouTube reaches more 18 to 49 year olds in an average week than all cable TV networks combined. Again, you really need to be on YouTube. And the good news is that low production value has become the new normal. Now, most late night TV shows on traditional television get an average of two to three million viewers per episode. If you're watching The Tonight Show or Stephen Colbert, uh, John Krasinski's SGN that he did from his home office had 17 million views of his first episode. So ultimately what that means is that you now have the same advantage as a broadcast network. There are a couple of keys again to YouTube and for all your videos really, and that's again to make videos for your viewers and your target audience. You really need to know what your audience wants to see and give them that video. Consistency is also important. If it's at all possible to post weekly, you should do that. You can actually schedule videos on YouTube and have them released at any time and date that you specify. So you can decide maybe you want your video to come out every Tuesday at 2 p.m. or something like that. And then you can look at your analytics. YouTube has a tremendous amount of 
research where you can review your numbers to improve and find out you know where the views are coming from how long people are staying just don't get too hung up on vanity metrics like views because it's really more important that your target market to your video rather than just a mass audience excuse me a few more tips for youtube again watch time is crucial youtube rewards watch time that means the longer you can keep people on your video and your YouTube channel, the more YouTube love you're going to get. Again, focus on the viewer experience and be as viewer centric as possible. Uh, content is still king, but quality is queen. So you don't want to completely abandon quality. You want to just do the best you can with what you have. Your YouTube channel ultimately should be a reflection of your brand and an extension of your website so that YouTube really becomes part of your overall branding and there's no disconnect. There are a couple of tools that I recommend for enhancing YouTube and for making it a bit easier. Two of those are VidIQ and TubeBuddy. These are essentially identical apps. They're Google Chrome extensions. Um, very, they have free versions, very inexpensive, but either of those will give you um, analytics. It will suggest keywords for you to use in your videos. It will uh, help you optimize your videos. Another tool that I use uh, for YouTube and other things are Canva, so I can create custom thumbnails using canva.com or I can create custom thumbnails using Thumbnail Blaster. Um, you want to definitely, if you're creating videos for YouTube, create custom thumbnails because typically the, the ones that YouTube gives you by default are not that great. If you're looking for uh, optimizing your videos with keywords or tags, you may want to check out ubersuggest.com or just the YouTube keyword tool. Next slide, please, thanks. And the final key or the final way to increase your, uh, to build your business with video is to steal or borrow from Hollywood. Um, I worked in Los Angeles for many years for E! Entertainment Television and the Fox Kids Network. And uh, some of the lessons that we learned there and some of the things that you can borrow from Hollywood is that every picture tells a story and every video tells a story. Even if it's a short 15 or 30 second video, it really has to communicate a story. Another trick from Hollywood you can borrow is to really roll out the red carpet and make your video releases an event. As I mentioned earlier, you can schedule videos to premiere on YouTube at a specific time. You can promote that video release on your other platforms, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, but you really want to try to make your new videos as much of an event as possible. Um, also, cliffhangers, as you know from the world of TV and movies, bring audiences back and you can do the same thing in your videos by teasing your next video or basically, you know, making the audience want to come back for more. Um, sequels create an evergreen franchise. Hollywood loves sequels and you can do the same with your videos by doing video series or video themes. Um, and you want to definitely take advantage of that. And last but not least, uh, what we used to say all the time in the TV business business was we'll fix it in post, which means pretty much any video that you shoot and create can be enhanced or edited or cleaned up in post production. So you have the opportunity to do that if you like. So really quickly, the seven keys summary are to use a video first philosophy, pick your platforms and find your video sweet spot. Use the Seinfeld system to repurpose your videos. Uh, find the tools that you want to use and keep it simple. Use video email. I can't stress that enough. It's very powerful. Um, also, tame the YouTube beast and steal from Hollywood. Now, the last bonus key that's really important because none of this other stuff counts unless you actually implement implement this with video. So all the video knowledge and firepower is useless unless you actually do it. Uh, I'm happy to help. So again, please feel free to reach out. I'm also happy to answer questions. If you check the next slide, one way you can do that if you have other questions beyond this webinar is to uh, join our free Facebook group called Video Nation at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash go live video. We answer questions, we do video critiques, we offer a lot of ideas and support. So feel free to join us there. And again, thank you so much for 
taking the time to be here today. I am happy to answer any questions you may have or anything that I may not have covered. Thanks so much. Um, thank you so much, Lou. This is great stuff. I covered a ton of information, a lot of practical tips and tools that I know people are looking for. Um, we, uh, as you can see here, we have the QR code to submit questions. Um, so uh, scan that and, and send them in. Uh, we do have some already coming in. Um, a lot of folks were specifically interested in um, webinars and demos. Um, so. Uh, the question was, I know you went through a lot of um, tips for this type of thing, but specific to the webinars, what do you have uh, for suggestions for lighting, for yeah. video presentations, workshops, seminars, et cetera? Well, webinars, I mean, you can use things like we're using today, um, Microsoft Teams or Zoom uh, is obviously, I mean, Zoom really exploded during the pandemic because it was one of the only ways we could do stuff like that. And webinars can be a really powerful way to share a lot of information in a short amount of time. So my suggestion is to find, again, find that video sweet spot. For me, I'm used to Zoom. I use it all the time. So that's kind of my, my default, my go-to. And then I just have my LED lighting at the computer and my webcam and my little $15 background. And again, I once you have that set up, I kind of just leave it that way. It's like, okay, everything's working. I'm not going to touch anything. So it's really a matter of kind of Figuring out, you know, your setting and your background and making sure that you're, you know, as long as you have a good camera and a good microphone and decent lighting, you're good to go. The main thing is to just not get too hung up on the technology. Great. Um, another question, um, kind of interesting, a challenge around shooting outdoors. Do you have any tips for um, shooting an outdoor location without distracting sounds? Yes. Um, I was going to say don't, but sometimes <laughs> you have to. The, the trick about outdoors, is obviously you can't necessarily control the environment or the sound. So if you're shooting outdoors, you want to make sure that you have a lavalier microphone so that you can have the mic close to you and not you won't have as much wind noise or background noise. Um, I mentioned, I think the uh, um, Smart Lav Plus was the, the one that I use. So you want to definitely use a lav mic if you're outside and then also just be aware of the lighting you want to make sure that the you know the sun or the light source is not behind you because you'll be all washed out you want to make sure that the if there is uh sunlight that it's coming towards you and that you're well lit and honestly it's it's better to shoot on a cloudy day than it is to shoot on a sunny day because you don't have as many issues with that great advice um so you mentioned you really drove home how important youtube is uh one of our viewers specifically is interested in um doing utilizing youtube live Mm -hmm. um, any specs and requirements that are specific to that feature? Uh, not really. Again, I use um, software called StreamYard and it allows me to go to YouTube Live and Facebook Live simultaneously. So you're getting kind of more bang for your buck. Uh, but YouTube, again, you can go straight to YouTube and click live and just start you know, recording your video straight away on YouTube. Um, so I would say, you know, you may want to look at a third party software like StreamYard that just makes it a little bit easier to uh, broadcast to more than one place at the same time. Great. Um, another question coming in. Um, when using Warm Welcome, uh, do the recipients need to sign up to continue the discussion? Uh, no, that's the great thing about it because you you know that they're using your software basically so I can have those video conversations or go back and forth with my clients and they don't have to be on Warm Welcome. Good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a few folks ask, will this be recorded? Will these slides be available afterwards? Uh, answer is yes to both of those. Um, so we will send out the slides to everybody that um, signed up for this session. Um, and then we always like to post the recordings of these events on uh, staplesconnect.com. Sure. That's good too, because I know with some of the equipment, it's, you know, it goes by quickly. It's like, okay, what was the name of that crazy mic? <laughs> Yeah, lots of great information in here to, to refer to for sure. Um, and again, uh, keep the questions coming. You can uh, use the QR code here. Um, that'll bring up a quick form. You can enter in your question and we'll get it over to Lou. Um, so another one we saw here was, um, so which YouTube analytics are the most important? So you said views were a vanity metric. So what would you focus yeah. on? Um, I mean, it's funny because views again, it's like, you know, um, it, it's everybody wants to have more views, but it's more important to have the right people and the right audience viewing. The key analytics for YouTube are watch time. So you want to see are people sticking with your videos? I can go in and take a look and say, well, look, I'm getting a lot of drop off at a minute and a half. So maybe I should keep my videos under a minute and a half. Um, and I know there are a lot of questions about 
video length, and there's no real right or wrong answer. Most videos on YouTube are under three minutes, um, but surprisingly, right after that, the next highest group is like eight to 10 minutes. So there's a strange little, it's good to have a combination of lengths. If you have quick tip videos, and then maybe some that are more in depth uh, that go eight to 10 minutes. Awesome, glad actually there was a question on length, so you just hit that, I will check that off, thank you. Um, two for one there. Um, another good question here, um, what can I do to avoid glare coming from my glasses? So they say that you're wearing glasses, but they don't see the glare, so what's your secret? Um, my lights are about two feet higher than my computer, so this sort of getting to the top of my head, so, so as long as they're not coming directly at you. Um, so the, the trick there is to just make sure that your lighting is higher than your eyes, so, so that it's not coming directly into your eyes. Good to know, awesome. Um, let's see, another question. Um, you met, I think you mentioned that you use a, a, a Mac for, for yeah. your recording, so somebody is looking for advice on the type of equipment um, to work from home for my Mac Pro computer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what type of uh, hardware and software do you recommend? Yeah. That it's kind of referenced before, but specifically. Yeah, but that's a, it's a great question. And, and, you know, fortunately, I mean, really with any laptop these days, but, but with Macs in particular, you're, you're pretty much good to go out of the box because you've got a great webcam embedded in the uh, computer as well as a microphone. But I still use um, an external mic. I use that, the blue um, Yeti microphone, Y-E-T-I. And I connect that to the back of my computer. And then I have my two LED lights on either side of the computer. So I've got them coming towards me from above. And um, honestly, that's it. I've got my, my lights, my mic, my relatively neutral background, and that's, that's pretty much all you need to get going. Great. I think along those lines, we've had a couple of questions, kind of what's the simplest thing to get started? What hardware mm -hmm. tools do I need to get up and running? Um, most simplistic way to create a video. So I know you've given us a lot of tips. If you had to boil it down just to get started simply, what would you say? Um, if you have a, a smartphone in your pocket, then you have a video camera that's, that's every bit as good as what they use to make movies these days. So uh, use your phone as your camera is honestly the very, you know, down and dirty, simplest way that you could possibly do it. And aside from that, if you're, you know, just set up your webcam and microphone on your desktop or tablet or uh, laptop and you should be good to go. So again, most of the software now, uh, most of the hardware, I should say, uh, is good to go out of the box. So you can literally, you know, take out your tablet or take out your laptop, turn on the uh, camera and you're ready to roll. Great advice. Yeah, I really can't get simpler than that. Mm -hmm. All right, um, we're, we're starting to get to the end of the questions that we have in, so I'll do one more call. Um, again, again, scan the QR code. If you're not a QR code person, um, the Eventbrite link has a, a link directly into the question, so um, fire away. Um, as we start to wrap up here, Lou, I had one more come in. Um, sure. Do you have any suggestions for, um, you talked about repurposing videos, uh, was a big one. Um, how about editing the videos into different clips and kind of chopping them up? Is that something you would recommend? Yeah, that's a great idea. In fact, what I do with my clients is sometimes I'll just do a, a Zoom interview with them for a half an hour or 45 minutes and then slice and dice it into smaller um, one or two minute segments. So the more you can, uh, you know, maybe take a longer video or webinar and repurpose it, it's just going to give you more video content that's uh, useful to, especially on things like uh, LinkedIn, where you can't go over 10 minutes with LinkedIn videos. So you want to keep those short and sweet. Excellent. Very good. Well, I think um, that hits on all the questions that we received from the audience. Oh, I see. I see one more. Let me let me get it in here before we wrap it. Okay. Um, so I do four podcasts per week, but I want to start doing at least one video per week. Mm -hmm. How much different should the video be versus the podcast? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be much different at all. A lot of folks will do uh, use Zoom because you can do the audio and video separately. And in many cases, it's just um, just like a podcast, except you're seeing the person or people on camera. So I see a lot of folks doing uh, Zoom interviews where there are two people um, and they're using that as a podcast. So I don't think it necessarily needs to be drastically different. It's just, you're just adding that visual element. Excellent. Great. Well, um, Lou, I really appreciate your time today. All the great um, information, tools, tips, resources. Um, like I mentioned, we will send out slides um, after this this 
broadcast, so um, you can always refer back to that and we'll have the full recording available on staplesconnect.com. So um, again, thanks, Lou. Thank you to everybody watching today for your time and your questions. We really appreciate that. Um, so again, visit staplesconnect.com slash small business for even more resources, inspiration from people like Lou and other experts. Um, we're here to help. So on that, I would say that's a wrap. Thank you so much yep. and have a great day, everyone. Thanks.